So Logan's going to select. Which one are you selecting? I'm going to grab Humanoid Architecture. Humanoid Architecture. And he's going to go ahead and say Open. And it loads it in. And now you're going to see we have more level-like looking textures, if you will. And now, Logan, go ahead and show them how we can apply some of these textures to the walls over there. Well, to do a very simple texture application, you could left-click once on, say, the floor surface. And you can tell it's selected by the blue tint it puts on it. And then if we select a texture from the texture browser, it will simply get applied to whatever was selected. Very nice. If you need to select multiple faces, you can hold control while clicking on them. Notice how if I just left click, it keeps replacing the selection. Whereas if I hold control and then click an additional face, then I can select multiple faces. Excellent. And then there's another little shortcut key in there if we needed to select all of the faces for the given brush, which is? You could use Shift B if you wanted to grab every face. If you grab a single face or multiple, but then hit Shift B, it'll go ahead and grab every face on the brush you're working with. Excellent. And trust me, this can be very handy. So, Logan, go ahead and take just a second and set some textures up in there. And, you know, I'm not looking at them now, but you notice I have these extra two faces that are looking away from the camera right now. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Shift B shortcut grab the entire brush, deselect the floor and ceiling. Now I have all I've just have the four walls. Which he deselected by the way by just holding control which which really acts like a toggle and then he just selected on the ones that were already selected floor and ceiling and those became deselected. Right. So let me drop down to the f uh, walls category. So basically we have our packages and inside our pack packages is a bunch of different textures and they're all categorized for us ahead of time to make finding textures very easy. So we just switched over to the walls category. If for whatever reason you wanted to view all the textures in the package all at once, you could just hit all and then it'll just list all of them out. If you want to keep your display cleaner or, your, or you know what category you're looking for, you can turn that off and then sort by categories. Okay. So let me just click on, say, the first wall texture. Get something applied to the walls. And lastly, I'll click once on the ceiling, grab a ceiling, and apply it. All right, very nice. Okay, so now we've got a very simple level. Are we ready to play yet? Not quite. Not yet? Oh, man, come on. How much work do we got here? I guess we'd probably need an actual player start, right? Right. The game needs to know where to put you when you first spawn into the level. Kind of makes sense. So how would we go about doing that? It's very simple. You can simply right-click on the floor where you want the player start. And from the right-click menu, you have the ability to add a player start. Okay, very nice. Now, let me see something. Go ahead and right-click again. And by looking in there, there's uh, we see add static mesh, add karma actor. There's a few things in there, but if I wanted to add, let's say, a weapon into this, maybe I want a rocket launcher in there, why don't I see a rocket launcher in that selection of things to add? Well, there's a lot of stuff in a game, and if you threw everything in that menu, it would become <laughs> way too huge to deal with. a menu with a scroll bar. So if you actually did want a rocket launcher, well, first the way the game now works is you would add a weapon base first and assign a rocket launcher to that weapon base. So this is going to actually introduce us to another browser. The Actor Class Browser. The Actor Class Browser. And if I go down to Pickup Base, expand that, then we have Weapon Base. Hey, Weapon Base. Now, to actually add this, if I click on it so that it's selected, then go back to the level, bring up my right-click menu, you can see that that actor that I had selected is now in the right-click menu. So this is how you would decide where you want to add it into your level. That's very easy. So go ahead and add it, and there you go. And... Now, how would we switch that over now so that we could actually make sure that it was a rocket launcher that gets spawned? Well, we need to set one of its properties. To do that, we can right-click on the weapon base itself, bring up its properties, and down to weapon base, there we can select what kind of weapon, weapon we want to spawn. Hey, that's pretty simple. Set it to a rocket launcher and close that dialog out. Excellent. So that's going to now spawn a rocket launcher for us. All right. So right now, if we actually took and rebuilt this geometry and went in to play it, what we're going to see is all of our textures basically at the default brightness right now. There's going to be no sort of interesting lighting whatsoever going on. Is that correct there, Logan? Right. Okay, that's because we have no lights in our scene. So it would probably be a good idea if we actually took just a second and actually added a light into the scene. So to do that, again, all Logan needs to do is pick the area that he's interested in actually adding the light, right-click, and then you'll see Add Light Here. Okay, and he can go ahead and click on the light if he wants to, and we can go back into Properties. And then from in here, if we came down, we can adjust the lighting brightness, the hue, the saturation. So we can start adjusting color, how bright the light is. Uh, and there's other effects that we can do as well that we're going to be covering a little bit later on when we start lighting our more serious level. But, all right, let me go ahead and close out the properties real quick. Now, take note. 
we don't see any of this lighting actually in our scene in this perspective viewport right now. Hmm. Why not? Well, we haven't built lighting yet, so it doesn't know, it hasn't calculated any shadow maps. Okay, so to build lighting, it's very simple. We just go back to the toolbar at the top or to all of our different build icons and click build lighting. And take a look at that. We've got some illumination going on. And yeah, you can see where it's brighter near the light, and then it fades off to darkness. And, of course, we may want to grab the light and actually move it straight down a little bit. And what that will do is apply just a little bit more illumination to our ceiling as well. And we could set the brightness. There's a whole bunch of different things that we could do. So at this point, Logan, do we basically have a playable level now? Yes, this would load in and be basically playable. Now, I don't think we're going to win any awards with this particular level. I mean, it's just, you know, four simple walls, a floor, and a ceiling. But in the end, it does demonstrate the very basics behind creating a level or a map that's playable inside of Unreal. Okay? So with that, what we're going to do now is actually, it's a good idea, let me point this out, especially when you're working with simple maps or you've got a very powerful machine, to just kind of do a build-all, just in case you may have forgot to rebuild your geometry or any of your changed lights at any point. So we can come up here to the top and click the build-all real quick, and this will just rebuild all geometry, all lights. Make sure everything's good. And now we can just simply move our mouse up to the joystick right here, and this will allow us to actually play the map. Now let me point this out. We haven't actually saved the map at the moment. Is that going to cause a problem? No, it's not. The way that this, uh, the method that this uses is it actually saves your map to a temp file first. So no, even if you had saved your map, it doesn't make any difference. It'll save to that temp map, then load that temp map into the game. Oh, that's very handy. All right, so with that out of the way, now what we need to do is go ahead and launch it, but our recording technology changes right here for actually recording in-game. So we're going to actually stop the recording of this, and so you guys are going to see an instant flash, and we're suddenly going to be inside the game for this level. So here comes that flash. All right, so here we are inside the new level that we just created. Logan, I must admit that was quite easy to actually build this level and play it. Yes, it was. Okay. So you can see that we've got the textures. We've got a little bit of dim lighting going on. And if we look over to the left-hand side, we'll see we've got our rocket launcher. Now, I would like to go ahead and point out that we are currently holding a rocket launcher only because we spawned into the level just a second ago and grabbed one before we realized, oh, it would probably be a good idea if we actually record this. So you can see we do have our spawn point for the rocket launcher. Is there anything else, Logan, that we should probably spend just a second talking about while we're in here actually looking at the level right now? Well, you can tell that that's where our light would, uh, where we placed our light. Okay. Well, I guess not then. So that pretty much is going to wrap up this lesson right here on how to build your first very basic level inside of Unreal Ed. So from here, we're going to be moving on. And in the next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the viewports inside of Unreal Ed. And we'll start advancing some of the things we've been kind of quickly brushing over now inside Lesson 1 and Lesson 2 up to this point. So thanks a lot, guys.